Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, we will be discussing the concept of self versus tribe. Objective personality released the concepts of self versus tribe to describe the motivations of people. That means, do you do things for yourself or do you do things for the tribe? Why do you think in your head that you are doing things? What is your conscious frame of who you are and what you are doing and for what motivation? It is said, according to objective personality, that the extroverted judging type primarily acts and makes decisions based on what is good for the tribe. Similarly, or contrastingly, the introverted perceiving type is described as the self over tribe. That means that the self in the individual experience is raised over the tribe and that the self or the introverted perceiving type rather acts out of or because of their individuality and their personal experience rather than the experience of other people. Self versus tribe was never meant to describe why some people are inherently selfish and other people are so caring about others. In fact, it was just meant to approach, I believe, a philosophical concept, and that is the concept of consciousness. What I've found is that the self versus tribe is objective personalities take on self versus other. Self versus other. <laughs> when you discuss consciousness and existentialism and Jan Paul Sartre and other thinkers, what you'll find is self versus other is a central key concept. We can't explain conscious experience without accounting for the fact that we are both our thoughts and our values and the things that we identify with the self and our conscious of experience of the world. Yes, everything we experience of what's happening around us is as much a part of us and our conscious experience as our personal identity, our personal values and our personal inner world. Yeah. You cannot divide or separate consciousness into these two frames more than as an educational example. You can't divide and say that this is mine and what's happening here is yours. What I've found is that self types, and this is uh, fascinating, are people that have an internal locus of control, while tribe types have an external locus of control. How can we understand that? First of all, when you have an internal locus of control, you believe that you have power over the personal experience. You have power over your personal values, mind, thoughts, feelings, needs. You are responsible for and have control over and is in power of your personal state and your personal mental frame. When you're a tribe type, you have an external conscious locus of control. That means you are this means that you believe that you are in control of and in charge of your environment you are responsible for the needs of other people you can change and manipulate and organize society and people in your external world you can change the things that are happening around you you can somehow transmute everything that is external conscious experience. Harry Merle from Cognitive Personality Theory has a similar thought. He organizes people into convergent and divergent thinkers. When you are an introvert, your mind converges on introverted processes. When you are an extrovert, your mind con uh, converges on external processes. When you are an introvert, your mind diverges from external events and when you're an extrovert, your mind diverges from introverted or internal events. What does this mean? Once again, first of all, when you're an introvert, that means you believe that you are in control of and confident about your personal sphere. What you have inside, you feel confident about. What is happening outside, you feel less confident about. The things that happen around you are difficult to explain and chaotic and overwhelming. And that's why the introverted judging type is said to fear chaos. When you're an extrovert, the things that happen inside are seen as difficult to comprehend and chaotic and unnerving and unsettling, and therefore it is avoided. 
This does not, however, mean that we live in a world where we completely avoid or tune out of something. Rather, it changes how we approach things. When you are an extrovert, you tend to avoid dealing with the self and your own personal situation because you perceive your personal situation as too complicated, too overwhelming. There is too much. Where do you start? Where do you begin? You feel overwhelmed by it. If you do engage in it, you do so in a chaotic or scattered manner. You pick apart and start unraveling certain threads that relate to your personal experience, but you uh, struggle to do so fully. It's a nudging soft process. You don't want to endanger any of your core values. You don't want to hit against any of your personal needs. You don't want to compromise anything. You are careful about the balance and of maintaining the self. When you are an introvert, you perceive the external world in a cautious manner. You're afraid of making mistakes, saying something wrong or doing something that you shouldn't. You can be a bit uncomfortable if somebody comes up and tries to hug you or if something happens or the world <laughs> jumps on or scares you. You can feel nervous about the things that happen around you. The concept of self and other are, in my honest opinion, poorly developed. I feel that uh, Dave and Shannon make a poor attempt of explaining how to interpret and labor with these terms. I feel that the terms are good. I feel that the terms themselves have promise. I believe that it's very interesting to discuss how the introvert and the extrovert relate to the concept of self and other. I believe there is a pattern there, and it's possible that they are seeing a correct pattern. However, I don't feel like the study guides or the content or the material that they are providing on these types is sufficient. I have been given access to their video tutorials and their video archives. I have looked over their videos, but I still don't feel like the answers or insights that they arrived at are enough or are complete. I do feel they need more work. So I encourage all of you to take some time to look at these concepts and think about them for yourself. What does it mean to be oriented towards the self or to be oriented towards the other? The truth is, I believe it's hard for us to manage the fact that we are separate from the world. It is difficult for all of us to navigate the fact that other people are having other experiences than the experiences and the things that we are having. As an extrovert, it might be easy to think that everyone is having the same experience that you are having. It's easy to assume that everyone else is experiencing the same situation the same way you do. When you are an introvert, you know that these things are not that easy. You feel innately that you are different or separate from everything that happens around you. You feel that everyone and everything that is going on is messy or complicated compared to the inner world that you feel is safe and promising and organized, at least when you're an introverted judging type. When uh, you look at and think about the world around you, you can see that people are sometimes a bit weird with emotions. Yeah. Self-types tend to perceive extroverts as weird with emotions or with logic. What that means is when an introvert looks at how the extroverted judging type deals with or expresses emotion, they find it a bit inauthentic. They find it a bit scattered. They find it a bit uh, impulsive. They find it a bit exaggerated. They see that the extrovert is putting a lot of emotions into the external world. Emotions that the introvert tends to put into the self. Yeah, the emotions of an introvert are mainly experienced and put internally. And that is why the introvert, in the Jungian terms, is described as intense. While the extrovert can be described as diverse or multifaceted. The extrovert will attach a little emotion to everything that is happening in the world. And will have their whole being spread across everyone they know. The extrovert scatters their sense of self and their self-concept in everyone and everything that is happening in the world. When the extrovert forms their identity, they do so by relating to and connecting to the world around them. They develop and build their sense of self through their relationship to the world. When an extrovert wants to get to know themselves, they do so by going out and interviewing other people. In that bouncing, connecting discussion, in that play of... Uh, 
throwing out ideas back and forth, they get input, their minds start spinning, they start consuming information, they start getting all these sensations and they start using it to build up this sense of who I am. <laughs> so the extrovert builds their sense of self by going into the world, while the introvert builds their sense of self by going inside. This looks weird to both observers. The extrovert finds that the introvert is going inside and feels separated from or disconnected from the introvert. The introvert feels that uh, the extrovert is intruding on or interfering with their process. That the extrovert is trying to ex instill on them some external order. And the introvert can respond to this in different ways. Some introverts will do so begrudgingly. They'll feel like uh, you're telling them what to do, but they won't question it because they don't dare to. They don't dare to question you. They don't dare to stand up against you. They don't dare to set boundaries or vocalize things because they're uncomfortable with stress from the external world. They find it scary and threatening, and so they believe it's best to comply with it. Other introverts, they might avoid it completely. They'll pull back from you. They'll retreat into their own cave. They'll hide from, turn off their phones, do anything to minimalize anything, any kind of input that will engage, endanger them or will threaten their inner balance or inner locus of control. The extrovert regards the inner world as chaotic and difficult and cha uh, chaotic in the sense that the emotions that they perceive and that they experience from the self are considered, considered inconvenient. They believe that their feelings and their experiences of their own life are uncomfortable and inconvenient in the sense that they endanger or threaten their ability to work and to improve their lives. So extroverts will use positive thinking or a sense of forced optimism to break through and avoid these kinds of negative emotions. It's typical for an extrovert to relieve in or engage in these constant positive mantras, constantly reaffirming themselves, trying to maintain a positive, uh, presentable state to the world. Because for the extrovert, it's so important that uh, the world accepts them, that they are part of the world, that they can maintain that sense of connectedness to the world around them. Or the extrovert will engage in tough talk. Tough talk like, don't be a wuss, don't be an idiot, don't be stupid. Extroverts might force themselves to have or to push through and to be strong, even though the fact that inside they feel like they're breaking apart, you know. And so they will do anything they can to maintain that strength. They'll do anything they can to show that they're not stressed, and that they're not bothered, and that they're not dead, struggling at all with what's happening. And so both types have issues because in order to attain a sense of consciousness, the inner world and the external world has to be united. That means you have to build a sense of self that is presentable to the world or that you have to be able to connect with and align with and build a relationship to the world in order to attain a full sense of consciousness. If you build a sense of self that is built in opposition towards or away from the world or a world that is uh, partially accepting or submissive, submissive to the world around you, you'll end up feeling disconnection. Yeah, as an introvert, if you try too hard to fit in or to submit to the world or to external events, you'll end up feeling like you're forced to live in a world you don't enjoy. Or if you avoid the world, you'll feel like you're constantly broken or isolated or alienated from the world. If you're an extrovert and you're constantly engaging in positive thinking or in tough talk, well, you're gonna find like, uh, you're gonna find yourself feeling more and more broken. You're gonna feel like there's something wrong with you. Every time you question or doubt yourself, you're gonna feel like you're showing signs of devil talk or like you're gonna feel like uh, you're, <laughs> somehow losing your grip and so the question is how do you align and connect and how do you build a full sense of consciousness obviously if you maintain and continue to hide within your eternal locus of control 
if you continue to cling to the things that make you feel secure and comfortable and confident, yeah, you're going to have a good time there, but you're going to feel terrible everywhere else. So you're going to have to think about how you relate to yourself and how you relate to others. I hope this video helped you understand objective personality and the concept of self and other. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.